So Heavenly Father, would you, would you open our hearts, God, to you? Prepare the way, Father. Bless our time here in this open sanctuary, Lord. I pray that the, your breath would breathe and, and push away the distractions of the day, of our, of our past, and that we would be open to a brand new future in our Lord Jesus Christ. You are holy, you are eternal, and we love you. And the only name that saves is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Amen. Come on up, Terry. What do you think of when I say the word church? Building, often, right? We all probably know the right answer, but often we think building. Also, we think um, Sunday morning service, right? Growing up, we always said, maybe some of you guys say this, uh, we're going to church. You guys say that? Well, we've trained our children and we have eight. My husband's the pastor and he's in New Zealand coming home soon. So we're all excited about that. Um, we've trained them. We don't say we're going to church. We say we're going to service. And so it's easy for them. I still sometimes slip up and say the wrong word. I still say we're going to church. Oh, no, no. We're going to service because what's the church? It's us, right? It's the body. It's us. And we're supposed to be not a dead organization but a living organism that's living and breathing and active and working for the Lord and, and seeing things change in our lives and in the lives of those around us. That's what we're supposed to be doing. And so coming to service for us, my husband likes to call these this and like home fellowships and Wednesday night Bible studies, he calls them spiritual gas stations. So we come, we get filled up, we get encouraged by being with other believers, we hear the word, we get challenged, we get exhorted, um, encouraged, healed, all those things. So then we can go back out and we can be a light and we can be the church every day and throughout the week every day. So that's our heart here at Crossroad and that's what we try to do and we're surrounded by some amazing families in this fellowship that really uh, want to walk that out. They want to preach the word and live the word by the power of the Holy Spirit. So, I was hearing that the Lord was requesting that we could share these and encourage the body with them because this is exactly what we're supposed to be doing. And so one of them has to do with Mike. Um, he works downtown and he was just sharing how it's exciting because there's some other Christian brothers at his work that have started a Bible study. And so they can meet on their break and have Bible study. They also hold something else at the evening time in the um, union. What do you call it? What? The police union hall or something, a Bible study, right? And it's just amazing they would allow them to do that. And so these brothers are being a light down there at his workplace. And Mike is one of them. And it's exciting because that's what God's called us to be, right? In our workplaces, we need to be touching and influencing those around us in our workplaces. Another testimony, Sam over here was sharing with us that his son, who lives on the mainland, was going through a difficult time and struggling with anger. And he heard about it, his son didn't want to talk to him on the phone, so he began to pray. And he began to pray and pray and pray until the Lord gave him a release and um, he said, you know, the enemy kept trying to put these doubts in his mind that God's not going to hear your prayer. It's not going to make a difference. Why are you doing this kind of thing? But he kept praying and pressing in until he felt he could stop. And then it wasn't long until shortly after that, his son called him. And he said, yeah, I was really having this bout with anger and struggle. And it just left. And I heard that. Yes. That's the church. That's us being active, alive, walking and living and breathing with the Lord, right? And then the other testimony has to do with Greg and Laura. His wife is sick today. She's not here, but this family, they, they live and walk this, you know. They just moved to a new neighborhood, and it's not a neighborhood that they would have picked, right? <laughs> it's a very nice neighborhood. <laughs> and... Um, but God put them there. And so their heart is wherever God puts us, we're going to touch lives. You know, that's just what they do. And they do it so naturally. 
And so their son's out riding a skateboard and he meets a neighbor and they talk story. And then she has some children. So that makes a connection with Laura. So they connect and when their garage doors open, they're opposite each other, they wave. You know, the simple things, right? They're making these connections. And so eventually they felt like, you know what? We need to invite them over for dinner. So they had them over for dinner, had a great time. The husband was asking some questions, you know, about what's going on in our world today and all these things, right? Wonderful time. A few days later, about a week later, the wife calls Laura on the phone crying. My husband left me. So Laura begins to pray. Thank you, Lord. Again, open door. So she goes over to her house starts to minister her not just like oh I'm so sorry and oh that man and no minister the word and encouraging her and even some correction and the lady was so open and and wanting help at the same time Greg was texting the husband doing the same thing and by the end of the evening the husband came back correct and so God is working in this family and we are continuing to pray for them and I just, that's, that's it. That's what we're here for. You know, we have to go do our jobs and I have to wash dishes and clean my toilet, which I hate to do. <laughs> but praise God, that's not what it's all about. <laughs> There's more to it than that. And it has to do with people. So the Lord gave me this scripture. And so we're going to pray today. The scripture of Matthew, I was praying about this last night, Matthew 9, 36. When Jesus saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the labors are few. Therefore, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out labors into his harvest. So this morning, you know, the challenge to all of us, the word I believe to myself and to all of us is, are we being faithful labors right around us? You know, it's exciting, the team going to New Zealand, that's all part of it. Those kids are going to come back changed and touched by God. But we all know we're all missionaries. Our neighbors, you know, do we know the names of our neighbors? Do we know their names? Are we have some sort of contact so that if there's in a crisis that happens, they'll call you, right? Uh, we had a neighbor when we lived in Pearl City and we lived there eight years. We prayed and had this awesome relationship. She never came to the Lord. Then God moved us to Kapolei. And two months later, here she comes walking to our service. My kids all ran, Auntie Trudy, Auntie Trudy. And she came to one of our ladies' devoted women things and received the Lord. So it was eight years later, but, you know, God did it. So he wants us to be involved and be prayerful about the people around us at work, our family, and our neighbors. So we're going to do something kind of special. If I can have Micah, Malia, Piper. These guys, these young people are going to come give each of you a paper and it's folded in half for a reason so just leave it folded in half it's just scrap paper um, they're gonna just quickly pass it out everyone give one to everyone and kids if you want to write you can as well each of them on the bottom half of the paper what I'd like to do to you is that you write three names three families one would be a name one is a family member, and one is a coworker or a friend that need the Lord. So just take a few minutes, ask the Lord, who would you have me write down? Maybe someone you've been praying for, maybe you need, wow, who is my neighbor? If you don't know their name, just jot down the neighbor on the left. <laughs> okay, a neighbor, a family member, and a coworker or a friend. I'll give you a few minutes, just think about it.
You guys got it? Should be easy, right? We all have family that need the Lord, neighbors that need the Lord, friends and coworkers that need the Lord. Okay, jot their names down. On the other side, can you also write down the same names? And just leave it for now, and I'll tell you what we'll do. <laughs> On the other side, write them down. Just, I know it's not really a blank piece of paper, but just wherever. The same names that you wrote. So you have the same three names or families on both sides. Can you tell I'm a homeschooling mom? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, you got it? Now we're just gonna give you time. Partner up with your family that's here, your husband, your children, um, friends, whoever, and we're going to just take a few minutes and just lift these names, these people up to the Lord. Okay, so I'll pray just, Father bless this time as we corporately gather together. You guys can uh, move your chairs if you want to, just circle up and um, just take a few minutes and lift them up by name to the Lord. Thank you.
Thank you, Lord. Father, give us faith to believe you and give us hearts that are willing to lay down our lives for those around us. God, please help us not to be so busy that we don't see. Give us your eyes and your hands and your heart that we would see the people around us, that we would care, we would have your compassion. For it's truly the same as you looked out at the multitude and you had compassion on them because they were weary and lost and scattered like someone without a shepherd. That's so true. The people around us, they are exactly like that. And they may try to look good on the outside, but so many of them on the inside are hurting and struggling and crying out for help. And God, we have the answer. Please just give us your love. It's by your love that would draw them to you, God. So just flow through. I pray each person that's here today, it's not by accident. I pray that you put in their hearts just a, a fresh zeal to pray for their neighbors and their family and co-workers. I pray that you open their eyes to see in a fresh way how you would want to use them in their lives. I know as they pray, you will begin to open the doors and provide the opportunities. So God, just touch us today with this. Change us. Make us the church that's active and living. Fill us up, God, with your spirit. We thank you. We thank you, Lord, for it's such a joy to obey you and to see you do miracles, God. It is such a joy. Nothing compares to seeing you do miracles in people's lives. It's nothing, nothing. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. So the last little thing is... We would like to ask you, if you want to, to tear your paper in half where it's folded. And then we'd like to encourage you this week that you commit every day this week, today through Saturday, that you're going to pray for those people on that list. And we're going to collect the other half. So Micah and Skye and Piper, they'll come around and collect your other half. And we're going to commit to pray with you every day this week for those people on your list. So if you'd like to jot on there, maybe the state you're from, if you're not from Hawaii, um, that would be awesome. You don't have to, that's fine. But um, if you'd like to do that, and we're going to collect those and we're going to commit to be praying together as the body of Christ to believe God to do miracles. And please take the bulletin that has our email. And if God does something, please let us know. That would be so encouraging. All right. Thank you, church.